There she is. Hey, Kathy, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am good. So quick uh, check. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. Um, okay. Well, it's almost nine o'clock on Monday night. And wow, we're technically like three hours before this um, official shelter in place, which is uh, strange. But um, I, first of all, I want to thank you. Um, one of the things that I'm wanting to do is just have some conversations with some local folks about how all the, I'll just call it the wackiness of COVID-19 <laughs> is uh, affecting us. And I want, uh, I want everybody that eventually sees this, whoever that is, is to know that, um, you know, you live just around the block from me here in Papel and you're a nurse. And I think you have, I think you can give a really, really amazing, um, you know, um, you can give some information that the rest of us don't understand what's going on, right? You're seeing sure. stuff. So, so first of all, Kathy, um, I know you had a hard day at work today, and uh, you're kind of a night owl. So thanks for the, the time to do this. Uh, we'll be on for just a few minutes. But um, maybe tell everybody that ends up seeing this, um, tell them about yourself. And you don't have to necessarily say where you work, but, you know, what do you do? And um, what's going on right now? So I work at one of our local DFW hospitals, and I um, have done different types of nursing, but the nursing I do now is bringing in patients to our system and kind of getting them the services they need when they're at smaller systems and don't have those services. So that's my job now is kind of coordinating that entire effort with nurse to nurses and doc to doc so that we're getting all these people talking to get patients where they need to go. So that's my role now. And what I'm seeing, you know, really in the hospital is um, I think there's some, some fear, some tension, some stress around um, what's the best practice, what's the best thing to do for our patients, how do we make sure that we're keeping our patients safe, how do we make sure we're keeping our staff safe, and I think there's a lot of fear around um, what's, what's the best thing to do. So you, uh, so you work here in Dallas, and um, let me just ask you a really simple question. But for us that are, you know, seeing the news and trying to do the right thing about uh, just you know staying inside and really just trying to figure this out, right? We're kind of all in this together. None of us know sure. how to do this, um, but we all understand typically kind of what a nurse does. But what was your day like two weeks ago compared to like? what your day was like today like what are you seeing that would help just a completely normal family that doesn't see what's going on understand what is really happening in your eyes so i mean the interesting thing is is we've been kind of a little bit full already because of colds and flu season and this flu season in particular has um been kind of bad for even some younger folks and so we've seen um, maybe more ICU transfers, more um, patients coming in that need higher levels of care. And so that's kind of already been going on, but now we're really kind of at a standstill on patients that are presumptive positive, meaning they could have this coronavirus. And we're really needing to wait on testing because we don't know for sure. So it's kind of a bottleneck situation where we don't have enough beds for the patients who are positive and all the patients who could be positive while we wait for the test to come back. So that's really kind of the difference in a few weeks ago to now. So is there, I mean, is there panic in the hospitals? Is everybody running around crazy? Is it um, just kind of, I mean, what, what, I mean, what's it like? I mean, because depending on what news you watch, it might sound like the world's about to end or everything's sure. fine. But what are you seeing after kind of this first week of what I just call wackiness? So I will say um, there's no need to panic. That even though we don't know everything about this particular virus, we do know a lot about viruses. And there is not a general sense of panic in the hospital, um, we are professionals, nurses are professionals, doctors are professionals, respiratory therapists. I mean, everybody that works in this healthcare setting 
know how to protect themselves and, the, and their patients, even though we don't know the specifics of this virus. So maybe there's some things that we're doing now that we'll learn, oh, maybe you didn't have to wear that particular mask. Maybe you could have worn a different one. We'll, we'll figure out those kind of small details, but there's no need to panic and there's not a sense of panic in the hospitals. There's a, absolutely a sense of urgency in getting the patients tested and making sure that our patients go to the right place, but not a sense of panic. Got it. No, that's helpful. So let's talk about testing real quick. Um, it seems like to a lay person trying to keep up that there may not be enough test or um, I'm not quite sure if I can get testing or even know where to go. Um, but from what happened just from today, what would you just tell the normal family at home if they think they have symptoms? Like what does testing look like? What should how should we think about that? Sure, that's a great question. So <clears throat> from everything I'm hearing from my um, colleagues in the ER is that if you don't think you're dying or you are not having shortness of breath, please don't go to the ER just to be tested. It's not an appropriate place and you're pulling the doctors away from patients that are having difficulty breathing and are needing really, really serious care. So if you're having mild symptoms, um, first they'd like you to stay home. Um, the second option is to use, I think there's a number of different apps. I've seen a couple out there with Children's uh, Medical Center has put one out for the pediatric patients and Baylor Scott and White, I believe, put one out. I think I've seen the HCA put one out for all the Med City, you know, Las Colinas and, and those different hospitals. So you can use one of the apps and go through like a questionnaire to tell you, should I contact my doctor? Should I go to the ER? I would say save the ER for when things are really dire. Um, and before that, contact your physician or use one of those questionnaires. So two, two quick follow-ups. So um, I actually, there, I, I saw that if you ask Siri, do I have COVID-19, that there's actually a questionnaire you can do on Siri if you have an iPhone, uh, which I find really interesting. Um, and apparently it just pulls information from cdc.gov, which would be an official place to get information. Um, yep. But the second thing is um, testing, right? So if I'm if I think I have a fever, if I'm, if I'm coughing, doesn't there need to be like some, like some base level things that are going on with me before I can even get testing? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. So they, um, I, I've heard some sources say, you know, if you want to get tested, you can get tested. And, and that's just not true. You have to meet some certain criteria because we don't have testing for everyone at this point. We just don't have enough tests. So if you meet certain criteria like fever, respiratory distress, coughing, um, feeling short of breath, um, I think there's, I think those are the top three symptoms as fever, shortness of breath and cough. If you have those and you go to, I think American Airlines Center is, um, has a drive-through testing, Parkland has a drive-through testing. I believe one of the medical city does, maybe Medical City Dallas, I would have to do more um, look that up to be sure, but there's some drive-through testing, but you do need to meet criteria. So we can't just all get in a line and go drive to American Airlines Center and all be tested. We just don't have that capability yet. Yeah, I, I one thing I might add is just uh, if if anybody sees this that lives in Coppell, Texas, where we both live, I mean, just go to coppelltx.gov. Um, and um, that, this is going to give you some information. Then, of course, go to cdc.gov uh, to get, you know, some, some, I guess, the latest information to try to figure this out. Um, okay. Well, and I will say to, yeah. to your point, um, please be very careful where you're getting information. I think that is probably my best message right now is that if you're scared, there's a tendency to just look and look and look and look and look on the internet until you find the things you're looking for. And I would just caution everyone to say, if you're wanting information, you want to make sure that it's valid information and that you're um, seeking out sources like the CDC, the World Health Organization, um, the Department of Health and Human Services. There's a number of options that you can, that you can reach out to. Um, I'm a guy that's been in media for a very, very long time. You're a nurse. Um, I think um, from my perspective, a difficulty around this point to bring it up is what's the difference between opinions versus actual news? Sure. Um, and I think we really, um, we really have to focus on what's actual news versus people's opinions about what's going on. Um, so whether it's the World Health Organization or the CDC, um, you know, your local government, you just stay close to facts. Um, everybody has opinions and that's great, 
but let's just be, let's stay focused on facts. Yeah, and I mean, I think when you're looking at data points, I think there's been a lot sent around about, you know, the flatten the curve and where are those data points. I think it's easy to misconstrue or misunderstand information, and so be careful what you're looking at. And if you have questions, reach out. Reach out to people who might have the answers or can help explain it so that you understand what you're looking at. Okay, so maybe just uh, maybe just kind of a final question, then I'm going to, you know, you, you need to go get some rest because I may have a busy day tomorrow too. Um, but is there anything um, from a nurse um, you're, you're seeing this kind of day to day? Um, are, so two, two questions. Are you expecting this to get worse before it gets better, whatever that means? And based, and then after that is, what would you just say to a, to a family that's just kind of hunkering down, um, not going outside or just trying to stay really, really, you know, really, really tight to their homes and not see people? Um, what would you just say to us uh, with your experience? So um, the first question is, I do expect it to get worse. Um, I think the governor has come out and said, expect the numbers to increase as we increase testing. Um, I think that is absolutely correct. I think we should all be prepared for that. And as the numbers continue to go up, not to let ourselves really get into a panic mode, but rather kind of expect this is going to happen. The more you test, the more you're going to find. That's kind of just how it works. And so um, I do expect it to get worse. As far as the bed situation and the ICUs, I do also expect that to get worse because as you test more and as more people are exposed to the virus, you'll have more um, numbers who will need um, higher levels of care and more serious levels of care. So I, I do expect it to get worse. Now, what, what can we do about it? Everybody, families, you know, not just mine, but everybody's. And that is to stay home as much as possible. Um, there's a, a chain of infection. It's a, it's a very basic kind of host and virus, and you have to have the, vo the virus to get into the host to spread. That's just how viruses work. And so the more we can decrease that chain of infection and the more we can keep people from getting the virus, the less it spreads, the less severe outcomes we have. And so do what you're doing. I mean, I appreciate it. All the nurses appreciate it. The doctors appreciate it. We need everybody's help to stop the spread of the virus. And it takes something that seems so simple as staying home. It's inconvenient, it's irritating, it's annoying, it's anxiety producing, but it is incredibly helpful. And we are so grateful to those people who are, you know, I mean, it sounds silly, but really giving up their right to go out and do what they wanna do to help others. Awesome, well, Kathy, um... I, I really appreciate the time. Uh, thank you for um, uh, thank you for being a nurse. Um, just thank you for what uh, you're providing to all of us uh, every single day. Um, it's super important. And um, uh, just thanks for helping getting some, some words out about uh, what we should do, maybe how we should think, and just use your real experience. I really appreciate it. Sure, no problem. And I'm here and I'm available. I'm always willing to answer questions. So if anybody here locally knows me and has a question or a concern, I'm happy to help. Awesome. All right, Kathy, get some rest. Um, good luck tomorrow. And thanks again for, uh, thanks. for your help. Be safe. Yeah, All good right. night. All right, good night.